with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Well, good morning. Welcome to worship with us here at First Presbyterian Church in Michigan City. Uh, you know, as I was reflecting and preparing for worship this morning, I, I was telling Jennifer that I loved her sermon title, Where is the Party? And so I look forward into hearing her message about her trip in Spain and uh, being engaged in the uh, El Camino uh, trip. And so, um, as always, uh, as part of our tradition, let us now center ourselves into worship uh, as we breathe in the breath of God who creates us, as we breathe in the breath of God who redeems us, and as we breathe in the breath of God who sustains us. Let us worship. Please stand for the call to worship. Sometimes we hear the story. Sometimes we tell it. Sometimes we ignore it altogether. Sometimes we are the ones who offer the welcome. Sometimes we're the ones who return. Sometimes we're somewhere in between. Sometimes we're lost. Sometimes we're found. Sometimes we're a little of both. All the time, God is calling us home. All the time, God waits for us, ready to celebrate.
Let us all join in the call to confession. The scripture tells us, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who is in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Prayer of confession, let us join in unison. Almighty God, we acknowledge and confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Deepen within us our sorrow for the wrongs we have done and the good we have left undone. Friends, the psalmist assures us, as far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. In Christ, let us all forgive one another and pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Now let us share Christ's peace to everyone around us. And peace be with you to all those watching with us online. Do we have a children's sermon this morning? Do we have a children's sermon this morning? Just oh, okay. As I've mentioned, this month the children are learning about worship this month. The first week we focused on gathering together, um, that God wants us to gather as a group, not per se uh, walk out in the woods by ourselves, but to worship God wants us to gather as a community, which is why we do this every Sunday. And then last week, we focused on that we are participants of worship, that even though that we are out here, we aren't the audience of what's going on up here. Who did we say, Jerry, was the audience of our worship? God. God is the audience. We are participants, whether we're up here or out here. We are participating in worship. This week, we're going to focus on that during worship, We are changed, okay? So we're going to read a story here today, Jerry. This one I'm going to read now is going to be different than the story that I read upstairs. A lot of times they're the same. This week they're going to be two different ones that are going to talk about changing, okay? When we go upstairs, we're going to talk about a change and that sometimes we see changes quickly and sometimes changes take a while 
to see that you changed, okay? But this one is going to be, this story here is coming from, the Corinth, uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 26 through 33, and it's going to be Paul telling the church that sometimes we need to change in worship. And sometimes change is hard, okay? But it opens up new opportunities, all right? So we're going to read this story, and then in Sunday school we'll talk about sometimes change takes a while. Sometimes we see it immediately, sometimes not. So, All right. In the early days of the church, as people were trying... Oh, I forgot. The word change is our key word here today. So every time you hear it in the story, I think it's going to be six or seven times, you're going to wave your hands, okay, so that you're listening, okay? We're listening for the word change because we're going to hear it a lot today. Okay. In the early days of the church... As people were trying to understand how to live and serve and worship together, church leaders often wrote letters to whole communities with advice and ideas on how to help them get along better. One leader named Paul wrote a letter to a church in a city called Corinth. Paul had spent a lot of time helping this new church. Paul helped them to be welcoming to others, and he helped them to get organized as a church. They were doing pretty well, but people in the community had a lot of questions about worship. For many people who were new to being a part of a church, the rules and the traditions were a big change. All right. For others, often people who had been to church for a long time, having new people who were sometimes different from them be a part of their worship community also felt like a big change. Okay. Paul knew that what this church needed to do was share ideas, be open to changes, and work together to make their church a special place where God was the center of everything that they did. Paul helped them by sharing his wisdom with them through a series of letters. In one letter in particular, Paul wanted to be sure that everyone could offer something to the worship. Paul wrote, When you come together to worship God, each one of you can bring something. Maybe you'll bring a song or a hymn. Maybe there's a story or a lesson that you will tell. Perhaps a new idea has come to you that you can share. Some people become changed when God gives them a special message that only they can understand. Other people can use their skills and their talents to help us all to understand that message. For some of the people, this felt like a lot of changes. But Paul knew that worship was meant to change us, and that through us, the God of peace would bring this new community together, and that by worshiping God together, the community would be changed for the better. All right. Let's say a prayer you do not have to repeat after me. Dear God of transformations, we confess that we find comfort in routines. Awaken us to the dazzling glory that you would have us see and be. Help us to expect the unexpected. Amen. Please join in our prayer for illumination. We wait for you, O Lord. Our souls wait for you. And in your word, we hope, open our hearts and minds to hear your word, read your proclaimed, that we may have hope and believe in the good news. Amen. <clears throat> our first scripture lesson is from the lengthy Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless this holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all of his benefits. 
Who forgives all your iniquity and who heals all your diseases? Who redeems, redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good as long as you live? so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not only accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, as far as he removes our transgressions from us, as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made he remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone, and its place knows no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne on heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you, his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding. Obedient to his spoken word, bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the word of the Lord and all works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The word of the Lord. The second scripture is from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. 
and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. The word of God for the people of God. Good morning. For those of you that don't know, I'm Jennifer Casper, and I guess I should never say never. I said this is something I would never do, but here I am up here. I'm much more comfortable sitting on the floor in a circle with some kids or teens, so we'll see how this goes. My sister told me that I should picture everyone out there a teenager, so today you're all teenagers. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, I went to Spain at the end of September and walked the French route of the Camino de Santiago. If you walk the whole way, it starts in St. Jean-Pierre de Port, France. But I started in Villafranca, Spain, and walked to Santiago de Compostela, where it is said that St. James is buried. The pilgrimage takes 30 to 40 days, and I did the last part of it, walking 120 miles over 10 days, eight of them in rain and staying in hostels along the way. I went with a group of just over 20 people, all strangers except for two who I knew before going. It was an awesome experience, and I'm grateful I had the opportunity to go. When Pastor Erica asked me to talk today, she told me the scripture would be the prodigal son. Then she asked me if I would connect the prodigal son to my walk on the Camino. I laughed and told her, that probably every conversation I have for the next year will include talking about my walk on the Camino in some way. The more I thought about it, the more I realized how related my pilgrimage is to the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son left not knowing exactly what would happen, but expecting great things. When he left with his inheritance, he expected to have a great time. I also left for the Camino not knowing what would happen but expecting great things. Luckily, there were several big differences in our journeys. While the prodigal son lived lavishly and squandered his wealth, part of the focus on my Camino was living simply and not spending what wasn't necessary. Unlike the prodigal son, who didn't experience great things until he got back home, I experienced great things along my journey. In Luke, we read that the prodigal son comes to a point where he decides to humble himself to his father. Luke 15, verse 17 says, He came to his senses, and then he said, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. It's at this point that grace can be received, that unconditional love can be accepted. He had to be humbled to figure out the blessings that he could experience. I had a few humbling experiences on the Camino. I'm used to being pretty fit and active, but in February, I fractured my back, and so my body isn't quite up to speed, so to speak. On day one, I was the last of our group to arrive at our destination, long after most. 
Most of the day, I was frustrated with myself that I was struggling. Somewhere along the way, between day one and the middle of day two, I realized that my journey wasn't about being the fastest or the best. It was about experiencing every moment that I could enjoy, uh, that I could, enjoying the journey. Actually, I realized that my injury was a blessing. Our Camino guide had told us before we started to walk that the people who don't enjoy the walk are typically runners who are more focused on getting to the destination as fast as possible. If not for my injury, that would have been me. I needed to be humbled to experience the blessings that the Camino had to offer. Before I left on my pilgrimage, I wondered what kind of religious experience I would have. Even while on my trip, I kept waiting for something, searching for something, a lightning bolt, a neon sign, some big spiritual experience. It would be a great thing that I could come back and tell everyone about. I saw so many beautiful things, green pastures, beautiful mountains, blue skies, and lots of rain that all assured me of God's existence. What an incredible artist he is. I saw so many beautiful old churches and was in awe of these buildings that have been around for centuries to worship the same God that I am worshiping all these years later. How amazing is that? The worship experiences in the beautiful cathedrals was so inspiring, even though I didn't understand everything that was being said in Spanish. But while I had lots of time to walk and think, there were no big earth-shattering discoveries along the way. I came to some realizations, as I'm sure the prodigal son did when he was off on his adventure. For one thing, I felt more peace than I had in a long time. I realized that I need to be more intentional about having my time each day, going for daily walks and letting my mind reset. Sometimes that means listening to a scripture or devotional, and sometimes that means talking to God. Other times, I listen to an audiobook and just shut my brain off for a bit. And while several realizations helped me when I came home, a part of me wished I'd had some sort of big awakening moment. After I got home, I went hiking with my friend who went on the Camino with me. We both had the same thoughts about not having earth-shattering moments, but realized that our time on the Camino was the closest thing to experiencing what it would be like if everyone was trying, really trying, to live like Jesus. Everyone I encountered on the Camino seemed to be living this out, putting others' feelings ahead of their own while still enjoying the moment. We helped and supported each other and felt the love of others supporting us. Loving one another was just a part of life, not something we had to work hard on. Everyone who lived along the Camino route was so loving and encouraging. We saw signs actually painted on people's houses and in yards, encouraging us to keep going or telling us which way to go. The people at the hostels and restaurants were so welcoming and were such a wonderful sight after walking 15 miles in the rain. Each day felt like spending time at the prodigal son's welcome home party. Luke tells us that the father told his servants to bring the best robe, bring the fattened calf, and said, let's have a feast and celebrate. What a welcome home party they had. When we think of ourselves as the prodigal son and the father as our heavenly father, I love envisioning the celebration he has when we turn to him. I also think about this example as the way we are supposed to treat others, to welcome and celebrate everyone who comes our way. Looking back, when I picture my walk, it isn't the beautiful scenery or the great food or even the rainy walks. The first thing that comes to mind is the people I met along the way. Everyone on the Camino has a bond, a sense of connection like I've never felt before. Thousands of people on the same path sharing the same experiences. I had some very deep conversations about joy, sadness, grief, and of course rain. Some of the people I met, I talked to and then never saw again. Others, I'm sure, will be lifelong friends. But the common thread between us all was openness, a sense of welcome, kindness, and love. Nobody was judged. 
It didn't matter what nationality, what sexual orientation, or what anyone had done in their past. What mattered was that they were there walking right then. They showed up and were welcomed. Luke 15.2 tells us Jesus told this parable in response to the Pharisees and teachers of the law complaining that he welcomes sinners and eats with them. He wants everyone to know that this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be connecting with everyone, building relationships with people no matter how alike or different they are from us. Everyone we encounter who shows up should be welcomed. The prodigal son didn't find great things until he got home. But what we found was the same. Relationships. Unconditional love, welcoming people. Family and friends and strangers. This is how God's love is. How he wants us to treat others. What I'm missing now is experiencing a world where everyone is living like Jesus showed us. Where everyone naturally followed his greatest commandment to love one another. So I need to do what I can to be able to love and show others love by example, to help others experience a welcome home party, no matter who they are. So where is God leading you to host a party? Last week, Pastor Doreen talked about walls and gates. It got me to thinking. When people walk through the gates to somewhere new, what do they experience? Do they feel the unconditional love that I felt on the Camino, that the prodigal son felt when he arrived home? What can we do as a congregation to make sure everyone feels welcome when they come in? It's part of our logo, welcome, celebrate. What can we do, what can you do to make that happen? The mission committee is focusing on community ministry, an asset-based community development project by focusing on the people, places, and local resources in a one-mile radius, the area churches hope to come together to create co cooperative ministry opportunities. This may be a chance for you to jump in and help serve and show love to some people in our community. There are always opportunities to serve in the soup kitchen. If you want to be a greeter on Sunday morning, your job literally would be to welcome everyone who walks in. As most of you know, I work with the tweens and teens here. When we talked about what is important to them about church, connecting to the congregation almost always comes up first. Intergenerational relationships are so important for all generations. We learn from each other and grow from each other. There are always opportunities to volunteer for Sunday school, tweens, and youth activities. Leading tweens and youth is a lot different from giving a message up here. I'm better at that, so today is a little different. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you do a crazy game where you get up, move around, and you might end up with whipped cream on your head. But I do have an activity for you. The good news is my message is short, so you'll have plenty of time to do it at the end of the service and still be done with church on time. Last Sunday, the youth started a mural. In the center are the words, you are loved. Around it, they are writing words of love and encouragement, scripture about being loved and loving others. We're inviting you to be a part of this mural by writing your words or messages of love that they will see when they walk into the youth room. When you leave the sanctuary, it will be set up on the tables that you may have noticed as you walked in. And you'll have an opportunity to write or draw on it. Show them what unconditional love and encouragement looks like. Help our youth welcome new teens into their space as they work to make it a place where more teens want to come and feel welcome and loved. So as I close, I challenge us all to allow God to lead us to host this party here in our congregation. And that means inside the building and when we walk out those doors. Live out our mission to welcome, worship, celebrate, and serve. Amen. Please stand and let us join in our affirmation of faith. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, <clears throat> so that the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm the next one in the tag team here. And uh, now it is time to uh, express our gratitude to God in the uh, giving of our offerings. You can either um, place it in the plate or um, use this 
fancy little QR code, or just send it in the U.S. mail. So let us continue worshiping God with our offerings. Gracious God, we come before you this morning bringing all that we have and our very selves in service to you. And we ask, Lord, that you bless our offerings and use them for your benefit in the world and that we may also serve and use them for your purposes in this uh, place and time here in our church. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, I see. <laughs> we have uh, a line here for um, uh, information on what's going on in the church. Carol, did you wanna go first? Good morning. First, I would like to thank the choir for singing today. And we did this in the memory of Barb Vinson and mm -hmm. uh, our beloved sister who, is, who sang many, many times with us and we will remember her. The second thing I'd like to remind you of is that uh, during this whole month of November, the Presbyterian women will be collecting the thank offering and uh, there are still some blue envelopes in the back if you care to give uh, to this. I do have a poster back in the back by the cloakroom telling about, uh, again, the projects. And as I've said every Sunday so far, is, um, they can only give out as much money as we give here uh, at, at this time. Uh, from the Synod of Trinity, um, in uh, uh, the Presbytery of Carlisle. They were doing uh, a, a peace uh, offering which offers advocacy, education, and economic empowerment to survivors of sexual exploitation and human trafficking in the Harrisburg, Pennsylvania area. So that, uh, that's where $25,000 went. And then to the Office of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church, the Office of Immigration Issues, they, had, they received $15. 
a $15,000, sorry. The Office of Immigration Issues helps PC USA churches by producing, providing advice and resources toward a more just immigration system. And I know that's been talked a lot about in the, um, in the news, but I won't talk any more about that. One other thing that I'd like to remind you is that uh, I, I collected a couple of these cards uh, last week. Uh, tomorrow morning is November 18th, starting at 8 o'clock. Uh, the food for the body and spirit, uh, they're giving out uh, food at McDonald's up on Mich the Michigan Boulevard. So if you're interested in getting some of that food for yourself or for someone else, it starts at 8 o'clock. I'm assuming, though, that people will be lined up sooner than 8 o'clock up there, but uh, just so you know about that. And I think that's the end of my announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Morning, a few things from the uh, mission committee just real quick here. Um, of course, recently we have been uh, uh, collecting the brown bags and so I just uh, dropped off mine this morning and it is full mm -hmm. of your love, support and prayers as we soon uh, fill them up with the food boxes which will be distributed on November the 23rd uh, from 12.30 until 2.30 and so far uh, I had checked in with Deb uh, yesterday, and we have roughly 16 families, right, give or take, uh, uh, at this time. So if you know of any families in the area that may need a food box, uh, let uh, Deb know in, in that way. We aim to serve up to 25, give or take, families on that day, and um, let uh, uh, go ahead and uh, share that information. Um, our a food supply item of the month are a plastic spoons, and so uh, if you want to give some, uh, make sure to give it on the table here in the narthex area near the coat racks. Uh, and then, of course, our third Sunday program, which is uh, on a Sunday, November uh, 17th, which is today. <laughs> uh, after worship, uh, please join us as we welcome Katrina Langford, who is the executive director of the New Day Foundation uh, here in LaPorte, County. Uh, New Day is an organization that provides assistance to local patients living with cancer. And so if you would like to join us and learn more about that organization, do so in the Edith Boyd Lounge. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Sue wanted me to mention one more thing here. Um, so apparently there are turkey giveaways here coming up. And uh, the one that's coming up on Monday, um, November 18th at the Salvation Army in Laporte uh, from 12.30 until 2. And if that date doesn't work, there's also an opportunity on, on a Saturday, November 23rd at the Market Mall here just down south uh, from 9 o'clock till 11. And that's all I have to share. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's time to... Uh, move to the prayers of the people and I just want to highlight the white flower back there is in memory of um, our beloved sister uh, uh, Barb Benson and um, I have not heard anything about funerals so we'll have to wait on that so let's be a people of prayer Gracious God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all that is. You guide us through our lives and give us hope, peace, joy, and love. Everything that we have, Lord, comes from you. Help us to draw upon these gifts and share them with those who sojourn with us in this road to eternal life. When we see despair, may we offer encouragement. When we see turmoil, may we be a calming presence. When we see sadness, may we offer comfort. And where there is animosity and hatred, may we offer the healing balm of God's love. 
And finally, Lord, we pray for our church as we continue to walk in your ways and work for your purpose in the world. Give us courage for the living of this day and for your wisdom to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. Amen. And now we lift up our prayer concerns. Um, I have two here that have been submitted. Um, the first one is asking for prayers for Andrew Grove's uh, grandmother, Dorothy Highfield, is in the hospital. And he asked for our prayers for healing. And um, Ann and Sue uh, have a concern for Tasha Payton, Heidi Leach's niece lost her da daughter, Amora, on Friday. Amora had just turned nine months old. So we add her to our prayer list. So Lord, You've heard a couple prayers that have already been lifted. And we here in this congregation mourn the loss of our sister, Barb Vinson. We also lift up Dave Doherty, Joanna Miller, Barb Reichert, Mary Steider, and Donna Wiseman for health needs. And we pray for Brock as he mourns Barb's loss. We pray for Brock and his family. And we pray for Mark Smith and his family as they grieve the loss of Mark's Aunt Linda. We pray for our military and their families and for the AmeriCorps and Peace Corps workers and their families. So we lift them up to you, O oh Lord. We ask for your comfort and healing for all concerned. Amen. And now let us pray that prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I give you the charge and benediction. God saw you afar off this morning and ran to greet you. Go then in peace and bring God's extravagant, joyful love to a weary world, putting grace into action, and may God the creator, God the redeemer, and God the sustainer be with you all as you go out. Amen. <laughs>